Hoosiers Collective understands there is a pusher in everyone and provides a lifestyle and motivation to keep you going through the roughest times. The Pushers Collective clothing line represents the raw, uncompromising, and daring spirit of the young urban American. Go to www.pusherscollective.com. Again, that's www.pusherscollective.com. And check out the white leather P11 snapback featured on everybody from Yo Gotti to Ghostface Killer. Hashtag push your star, baby. This promo commercial is powered by RAI Radio, the new voice of millennial music. AT&T knows the best kind of holiday is the kind where everyone gets what they wished for. Make this holiday extra happy when you buy one. Get one free on our most popular smartphones. Like the Samsung Galaxy S6. Buy one, get one free. So spread some cheer and capture every minute of it. Right now at AT AT&T, buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones. This is Jonathan with the Million Dollar Mindset Podcast hosted on the Talk to Shaylin radio circuit, powered, syndicated globally on the RAI radio network. People, we have over 14 licensed stations. All of our network is licensed and tracked by Digital Radio Tracker. We have over 15 artists charting nationally in the top 200, top 150 independent, and we have five artists charting in the top 50 R&B and hip-hop. The Million Dollar Mindset Podcast is a podcast that is like no other. Our focus strictly is to discuss and talk with some of the biggest power players, influencers, tastemakers, and culture shifters in the world of technology, music, entertainment, business, nonprofits, sports, photography. We touch every aspect of the culture. Today is no different. We've had legends on this podcast from Malik Yoba. We've had some of the most innovative music producers in the world on this show, like Stevie J. We've had huge actors on the show, like Joseph Sakura from Power. Today, we have another power player. I'm talking about major. This is this is one of the unsung heroes behind the scenes guru. This is a true invisible corporate bully out there making sure that people get what they're supposed to get. This is a podcast you want to stay locked into. Today we're honored, and I mean super honored, to have Livio Harris on the Million Dollar Mindset podcast today. Livio, welcome to the Million Dollar Mindset. It's my pleasure, brother. My pleasure. Well, you know I had to give you that Diddy intro, man. I do that with everybody. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Take that. Take that. <laughs> man, I keep saying I got to get Diddy on the show, man. So I'm going to keep saying until you come on the podcast, man. That's my goal. I totally appreciate it. Totally appreciate it, brother. Definitely, man. Well, you know, everybody, everything's like a prize fight, man. So, you know, I have to give you that whole big Las Vegas, Mayweather, Pacquiao type intro, bro. I mean, because you deserve it, man. You've been in this game. Yeah, you, you've been in this game for a long time. There's a lot of miles on your car, but you haven't even touched the, the, the surface yet. And what you've done in 20 plus years is amazing. It's it's really life changing when you think about it, and I'm gonna let you kind of, you know, kind of navigate this ship today when it comes to the different things. But you are a a Mount Rushmore type person in the music business, and a lot of people, I know the millennial culture, not saying the the different culture, but the millennial culture uh, is gonna get introduced to that today. So we're honored. So I'm gonna jump right into it. 2017, January 1st you wake up to a new year and you look and you're looking into the mirror at your house and this year that day whether it's midnight or later on that morning what are you telling yourself that you are going to do in 2017 what are you looking forward to accomplishing this year what was what what was that mindset moment like for you to start the new year yeah Basically, yeah, that's a good, that's a great question. It was more like after 29 years of all the music and the publishing accolades and all, I'm like, okay, this year I have to, you know, take it up a notch. So I kind of added film and television to my 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 uh, my menu, should I say? Uh, and I just felt like, you know, I gotta, you know, I got 29 years under my belt, but I'm just like you said, I'm just getting started. So my goal is to kind of be bigger and better and, and more aggressive this year to take things to another level. 
Exactly. And the reason why I ask that question is because I just want people to understand, you know, there's a certain mentality. There's a certain mindset that successful people have when they look in the mirror and they say, you know, I want to be big and better this shit. But also what comes with that, too, is the mechanism, the certain tactics that you're going to use, the strategy. What is one of the strategies you wanted to implement this year? to make things big and better and tell me how that has gone thus far. Yeah, this uh the strategy was just, you know, like this like, you know, just kinda being more focused, you know, for me and, and, and you know, just being more focused and really like picking and choosing and not being as obsessive as I usually be and just really being more focused and and and, and all the things that I'm I'm involved in and like I said the great things I've accomplished over my years. But I think this year definitely was like okay, I've done a great I feel I've done greatness, but how do I take that up? I just felt like a notch I just felt like a lot more focused and being a little more picky about things and and and, and I think how this turned out for me has been great because like I said, uh, you know, I was I've established my own publishing company being that I work with Naughty Girl for twenty one years. I said, Look, let me do me, why am I doing them? And then the film and T V side of things, uh this fresh and new a uh, company called Tier Two Films out of Atlanta, family owned. You know, they brought me as the vice president. So I went to the, uh, I went running, you know, went, went on the, you know, went out the gate running with that. And so, you know, we've actually got about 20 coming up uh, in the film and TV world and some really great things. I'm, I'm talking some really big, you know, Eddie Murphy type, type movies, uh, I mean, to, you know, all genres. So I think that's my new excitement for, for 2017 and be honest, the fact that I'm kind of, you know, getting into the film and TV side of things on top of all the other accolades. Outstanding, definitely, and I mean, you laid it right out for the whole audience to hear. I mean, that's a that's a great blueprint, man. Appreciate that, definitely. I want to get into this real quick. Your day, you wake up in the morning. Give the listeners and myself kind of like a snapshot of how does your grind go throughout the day? How many hours you put in every day? What's part of some? You know, what's some of the secretness? of your routine uh, that makes you successful at what you do. I mean, you have to give us everything. Just give us a little bit of like how your grind is and what you do. Okay, yeah. So basically from from the time I wake up, I have to get up early these days because of East Coast business as well as West Coast and some overseas stuff in, uh, in the national. But it starts off with a bunch of, you know, emails and phone calls and just kind of catching up for the first couple of hours and then I try to get a workout in obviously and then from there you know off to Hollywood to do my you know daily meetings and that and, and you know with those, you know, whether it's record labels or film companies Netflix or whatever so it's just more just you know meetings after meetings after meetings and, and, and tons of phone calls and conference calls is it's kind of what my daily unit but starts at about 7 a.m. and it, it, it can go to 2 3 a.m. So when you're talking about the aspect of your actual grind, you know, I know me, I personally grind 18 hours a day. I say I'm going to grind 18 hours a day till I get to be 50, then I'm stopping. Cause, because because by then, by then I'll have everything lined up and done. So when you're talking about the aspect of being able to structure your team, how does your team coincide with your day-to-day grind. Yeah, well, yeah, my team is like, and I, and I take a page from, from Uptown Records in 1990, 91, 92, you know, you got, I try to kind of assemble a young team so that, you know, they're, they're very, um, they're very on point with the millennials and at the same time, you know, I'm mentoring so I want to think that's how Andre Ruz mentored Diddy and I look at Diddy today. You know, I want to be in say, a place in my chapter is like, wow, I did that as well. You know, but my team, you know, I have young, young and old actually, but older because of the experience and they 
people, this is Livio Harris on the Million Dollar Mindset Podcast today. One of the legends in the game. His history goes all the way back to Uptown Records, which we're going to get into that. He is one of the top music influencers of all time. And he's going to get into that as well as for developing brands. There's some people that see things from a concert level. This guy is a part of the concert, and he's also a director. So we're going to be jumping into all that in a few minutes. But this is Livio Harris on the Million Dollar Mindset Podcast. He's also CEO of Who's Harris Entertainment, um, one of the biggest entertainment companies, uh, um, privatized business companies out there right now in the entertainment business. So he'll get into that as well. I want to get into this part here. When you're talking about impact and about this new millennial age, at this point in the game, what is the motivation? The money has been made, the awards have been given, you've, you've, you've popped enough bottles to last a lifetime, you have, you have been a part of such a great era in music and in business. At this point, when you get up and go in the morning, what's pushing you? Absolutely, man. And, and that's a very humble statement that you made. That shows a lot of humility and that shows how much you really appreciate the culture. So uh, we totally respect that over here. I want to delve into this part here. When you're looking at everything from a mountain top perspective, like when you're looking down everything in the game and the music business and everything else, what is the best thing that you feel like you can offer to this industry, especially for the millennials, as far as whether it be artist development? Like, what do you bring? What is the greatest contribution or some of the great contributions you feel like you can bring to this culture of music in today's millennial generation? I'd, you know, I'd say I'd say definitely. Uh just kind of like encouraging and, and letting them know that you know you could definitely do whatever you want to do. Like I said, it's it's, it's that, you know it's like a, you know me coming out here from Kansas City, Missouri, like 29 years ago, not knowing anybody, and just came out here to be a writer. And then the LA, I'm coming from Kansas City, to LA, came out here to be a writer only, which turned into a producer, which turned into an artist, which turned into meeting you know Dina Howard and discovering her. Then I became a manager, and then managing actors, and then running a publishing company for 21 years, which wasn't in my plan. So just, you know, like, wow, I mean, I didn't think in a million years that I'll be doing all these things and not running a, a successful film company. So I think, you know, for me, it's, it's definitely, you know, encouraging them to do you and, and don't let no one tell you, nah, that ain't gonna work, or, nah, you ain't gonna make it, or, you know, because look at me, I'm a prime example of starting from the bottom, now I'm here. And again, it, it wasn't even like, I came out here and wrote it down, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be that. It just started falling in my lap and I have just been blessed. So, you know, for me it's just more than trying to help 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 the youth and the millennials know that, you know, you can be whatever you want. I mean, like you said, look at Obama, look at you know, look at, uh, at you know, the top ball players, LeBron. So anything is possible, so never give up. Even when they slam a door in your face. You know, even when they slam a door in your face, you know, you you know, you, you just gotta just you know, get back up and keep going. Absolutely. I mean, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> you know, definitely, definitely got to keep going. I want to get into this part here, Livio. When you are looking at things now, when it comes to your legacy, 
when you talk about legacy, you talk about the footprints that you want to leave. What is some of, I guess you can kind of get into it, the succession plan of your brand. Like, how do you want to set that up for after the afterlife of your career? Like when you stopped or when you moved on, like, like what do you have in place as regards to people to keep carrying on when it comes to your company or your brands and things of that nature? <laughs> oh, with me. Don't forget about me, man. Don't yeah, forget about yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Can't forget you, brother. Definitely. I want to go into this part right here. We always talk about this get rich or die trying moment. What point, and it could have been multiple, but talk about a point in your career when you were at a very low point, whether it be financially or whether it be confidence wise, like talk about that moment where you had to push through that wall and keep going to to get to the other side, to, keep, to, to stay on the path that has led you to this point in your career. Talk about one of those desperate, get rich or die trying, that golden parachute moment. Talk, talk to yourself, because everybody's had them, nobody likes them. And some people are broken from it, and some people are cracked from it, and some people are redefined by it. That's how I look at the game. So kind of give us some insights from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely, this is not for the weak. weak. This is definitely, you have to have a strong, strong personality, strong mind to, to be in this business in general. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure everyone's had those stories, including myself, where, you know, it's been times when, you know, trying to make it, a lot of my friends went back home, and they just couldn't, they couldn't hang, they couldn't handle it. So, you know, you're trying to make it, and you, you, you and I'm talking like I went to the top, but I had to be the Howard Freak like me, you know, it's like, you know, to, you know, make, you know, make millions, you know what I'm saying, and then to have all that go away, and then you find yourself with, with me, this is a real experience, you know, you stand in a, in a park, and you're like, wow, you think, you know, you look to do the draws, put a coin, to go to the coin spot, to turn that coin in a cab, like, so it's like, yo, do I give up and go back home as well, you know, or do I, you know, so I just kind of, you know, just kept pushing through, like, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, and so, for me, it was probably more, and it's just probably like, a, I don't know, it's like, wow, you know, why you bring that up, but on my mom's path, it just let me know, like, you know, I'm giving a, a, a hundred percent of this business, and, I, and it kind of makes you lose focus, too, with family, so you have to kind of be grounded with that, but it's like, my mom's a path, so I, I didn't just think the vibe of the show into this, this game, and then, I think I use that as my motivation to say, you know, anything I do for this point is going to be for her. So she, she, you know, she know, she knew my passion for this game, but it was like everything I do got to be for her. So that made me say I got to do greatness for my mom and have it out of me. So it was like, you know, I got, this is why I got to do this. I got to really get up and really get on the grind and, and not look back and, and not look at and just get this money. You know, let me figure out how to get this life in order. So it was really the motive of her was still to the day. It's like if I get an award, it's like this is for her. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was my turnaround, you know, you know, of keeping pushing, keeping going and 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 I kinda you know, came through. If I had to give it up, I'd be back home probably working at a broad key spot or something, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that's not that's not the goal, that's not what she would want it for me. So that's that's probably my answer to your question. Absolutely. And the thing that I like about that moment is you never lost sight of what was important. And that's what's and that's what it's all about, Livio. That's what it's all about. You never lost sight of, what, of what's important. And that's the thing about critical thinking and pressure and I call it the just that pressure cooker moment. A lot of times when people's money get low or things get bad, they go with the I, fear takes you into the obvious place. Yeah. It does. I agree. 
it takes you to the obvious place of where you of where failure is okay let me go here and just speaking from experience you know life is like that because that's a test because if you really want what you're supposed to have in life that only comes with you surviving and championing the moments that are trying to take it away from you because yes, there are moments that are going to come where things are going to be pulled from you and you're going to have to take that tug of war and pull that rope all the way back and break it and now you have your own rope it's not going to happen where everything is just you got it you got it, you got it. so it's it's not with fear you have to get in front of it because if you get behind yeah. it it's going to take you where you have to go and we've all been i've been there we all have have been there the key to the whole situation in your situation what you did which like all winners do and that's why you're here that's why we that's why you have 29 years you know you you've been a part of the other brands that have gone on to be billion dollar companies i mean you were with puffy at the infancy stages you know what up yeah, yeah. so yeah, sir. Sorry, and not to cut you off, and something, that, something that I think everybody should pay to, to, to take heed to as well. Is this motivates me to this day. I was at a remote conference about three years ago, and and and, and even then it was like, wow, I'm like, what am I doing this for? You know, like. And then he then he came out and, and spoke to the people at, the, at this award dinner. And he says, you know, mind you, he had Mary J. Blige, he produced seventeen. He was the man of the hour at Uptown Records. But even with all that, him and Andre had their, their differences, and Andre fired him, right? So he's like, and Dre was on the stage with him, he said, look, you know, he's like, you know, and Dre fired me in front of the whole audience, everybody's kind of chuckling, I'm like, oh, wow. He said, uh, he said, no, but I got fired because I was too cocky, I was too arrogant, and I thought, you know, that, you know, I was invincible, so and Dre fired me, he said, but, and I was at my all-time low, I was scared, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I just signed Biggie, I had to tell him we don't got to label a record to no more. So what he said was, sometimes those things happen for a reason. Like he said, because if Andre didn't fire me, I wouldn't have had Bad Boy. I wouldn't have had John John. I wouldn't have had Ciroc. I wouldn't have Revolt Music Conference. You know, so he said, so, so sometimes things happen for a reason. And that, that fear made him what he is today. He did he with all these different brands, these different things. So I always use that as my motivation when I think about it. like, man, I don't know why I'm not doing this. I think I'm about to quit. Then I go back into what the did he anything that he expressed like, you know, I wouldn't have this, this or that if I would have just you know, if it wasn't for the beer. So you're right. Exactly. And that's what I'm talking about. Like you have to get in front of it. And that's what any company, that's when in your personal life, in your spiritual life, in your health life, you gotta get in front of it because everything anything that you want is going to be a mountain between you and the goal it's always going to be a mount everest there you just got to climb it and not everybody wants to climb it it's 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 the adjustments you make so kudos to you people live your harris million dollar mindset you already know what it is he's talking cloth talk major key when cal talk about major key i don't think y'all get it this is the major key right here. We talking to the major key right here on the phone, Livio Harris. I want to go into this part here. Talk about, in just kind of a snapshot point of view, just give just the millennials a little bit of a snapshot of your great history and some of the things you've been a part of. This right here, people, is the is the Joe Dumas back in the day of the Pistons you're talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> I appreciate you. Yeah, so so basically the snapshot would be, you know, coming from Kansas City to LA and it's just writing for people and writing songs for people and then becoming, you know, forming a group and getting signed to Uptown Records at the time, which was, you know, Joe C. Mary J. Blige, Guy, Heavy D, Father C, namely. It was the bad boy of that of that era and then that was like the nineties. So, you know, being an artist on Uptown, being A and R by the man himself, Diddy, Andre Harrell being my mentor at the time. So it's just like, you know, started off as an artist, you know, 
only one to use with them building it from nothing to one of the biggest companies in independent publishing companies in the U.S. That was a great accomplishment for me. 21 years with them, and um, you know, long before that, actually, we to back up a little bit. Uh, met an uh, artist named Lil J, who became uh, you know the great actor John Dimmy McDaniel. So I met him since he said he was uh, 14. He's now 32. So you know, longevity with that. So basically, went from an, a writer, an artist, a manager of artists and actors, and then music publishing, and now film and TV with Tier 2 Films out of Atlanta. Awesome, man. What a journey. Millennials, do you hear this? This is what I'm talking about. The business of the business. People like Livio Harris, you need to research, do your homework, get in contact with this with this giant of, a, of an executive for sure. So, Livio, I want to talk about this part how can people reach you on social media yes it's uh it's been sure easy uh instagram as well as facebook is just my name at livio harris l-i-v as in victory i-o harris for the instagram uh same thing for twitter and then facebook is livio harris again l-i-v is in victory i-o h-a-r-r-i-s awesome and when it comes to the aspect of independent artists are you are you do you offer any type services for independent artists right now uh yes actually it's funny you said it. i just got back yesterday i was in alabama uh, tuscaloosa as a crew out there called boc entertainment and uh they was like you know we need you to come out and holler at us because most people don't know about tuscaloosa alabama of all places so i actually flew out there and uh met this the crew the crew was amazing it's like it's like the reinvention of you know, cash money where they started. So I really loved the energy of what they had. So to ask your question, I, you know, my goal was to go see what it was first. And then it, it, it actually was inc- uh, uh, some incredible things that they were doing out there. So now what I'm doing is I'm assisting them in putting the right team around them, like, the you know, the top radio cats, the top marketing people, the top social media people, the top streaming people to build their brand. And so, yes, I do definitely love that part, actually, because, again, that's part of the, the legacy of the saying, you know, hey, this guy helped us build our, our thing from nothing to something. And, you know, so I'm definitely open. I get those calls all the time. You know, hey, you know, I'm looking for, can I get your assistant? I listen to the projects. If it's hot, I try to help him get a deal. If you're a singer, if you're a writer, I'm in the publishing world. So if you're, if you're writing or you're producing, your beats are hot. I try to get you with the right people that to get in the places on Rick Ross and Bieber and our shit. So I assist in that. And then if you have your vision of being your own boss, then I'm the one to put the team together to make yourself kind of pop off like the next bad boy or whatever independently is, is the key right now everybody that's you know with the major is now trying to do the chance to rapper move you know like, you know, I want to be independent next time but my contract expires so independence is the future so if an artist has a dope and for artist is a great singer and they want to get signed to a label you can help them with that yes do it all the time yep. If it's hard, it makes sense. I could definitely get it to the right uh, people in an atmosphere to try and help get them a situation. If you're like a shit there, writer or producer, I can get them with the right writing sessions to try to get them. And I help pitch their songs, you know, get them songs on, you know, hopefully Drake or Wiz Khalifa or whoever. So, yeah, I have, I have friends in high places. I mean, after 29 years, I guess you would think so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely on that right there. I want to get into this last part. When it comes to labels are you doing any type of consulting for record labels uh i've had i've done it i've done it with epic records uh in the b2k era i've done it with silvy wrong with, with the electra era, era electra records era as of now technically no but he couldn't say so because what it is is it's more finding the records finding the talent i was just doing that on my own so it's kind of like indirectly consulting but not direct got it Livio Harris, what have you enjoyed the most about being being on the Million Dollar Mindset podcast today? Man, I'd say I, I enjoy the questions, man. The questions were, I've done a lot of interviews in my day, and, uh, I, you know, I think your, the questions were very, very uh, incredible questions that pulled, you know, that pulled things out of me in general to share with the, with the, with the you know, with the, the fans of your, your show, or your magazine, shall I say. Uh, but, yeah, I'll say, you know, it was very entertaining, very interesting and very entertaining. Well, first of all, 
you know, I, you know, we as a as a staff and as a company appreciate all your fine words, and that's the whole premise behind everything. Is I want, you know, we want people to see a different side of you. We want them to really hear the journey and visualize it at the same time. And you've done a great job of that today. Uh, we, you know, we've been honored to have you on the Main Island Mindset Podcast, and we're gonna be doing more things things with you. Shout out to Song Souls Music Group, the uh, AKA the uh the general the lieutenant brother a, a, you know, a meeks you know for bringing you to the table we have you know a lot of different we our company rei radio new hype beast media we get over 600 form submissions for people submitting their music from artists so we touch a lot of artists and independent and we will definitely be in contact with you with, with the right people because you can help people to even be educated on what they need which is a great thing so uh, you're a teacher you're you're in, you know you you're a teacher you're a businessman you're an entrepreneur you're a great humanitarian live your hair it's, it's been an honor to have you in the main Ella mindset podcast people you can reach him say your, say your social media handles one more time for me uh, so Livio Harris is uh, on the Instagram side. It's at, at Livio Harris. That's L I V as a victory. I O Harris H A R R I S. Same thing for Twitter and then for Facebook. This is Livio Harris. And um, is, is, is I definitely want to do a quick, quick shout out to uh, Tier Two Films. By the way, you look out for them. They're very. They're the next big thing out of Atlanta. This uh, Chancey B. Morris, female director. To be honest with you, we actually, you guys might want to do something interview with them because she's a female director that's killing it right now and writer. And then Rick Atari uh, is is uh, another family member who's a co-owner of the company. So look out for them. I want to give them a shout out for, for pushing my next venture, my next chapter in my career. Basically. Well, let's get her on, man. And you know, because now you could be a testimony for our show for her and set it up to Adrian let's get it going man ASAP yep, sounds good sounds good man I really appreciate it man it's like I said it's been a minute I said, it's been time because I haven't had a chance to expose the family TV side yet this is my first time announcing uh, my family TV side of things and then also let everybody know that you know they're like this guy got on all way it's just, just a shameless plug but for my 20 something years in the game over 20 years of it it's always see the I'm always an all white, white suit, white sneaker, white hat. So that's proud branded myself. That's another big part of, of his China brand yourself. Like there's no one in the universe that don't know the guy in all white because it's like this guy's forever consistently all white suit, all white everything. And why that is because I feel like an angel to help the world and it, it makes you feel, you know, powerful and, and, and an angel. So that's the that's the premises of the white. Well, that's very symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> very symbolic man very symbolic but listen man thanks for being on the podcast today we're honored to share your vision and people will be re-airing this interview on Radio Pushes TV within the next two weeks so you'll be getting tweets about it Instagram posts this will, this will stream live on TV because as you know everything is a viral podcast with us Live your Harris God bless thanks for being on the podcast today sir thank you guys for having me man it's a great platform thank you Perfect, perfect. AT&T knows the best kind of holiday is the kind where everyone gets what they wished for. Make this holiday extra happy when you buy one. Get one free on our most popular smartphones. Like the Samsung Galaxy S6. Buy one, get one free. So spread some cheer and capture every minute of it. Right now at AT&T, buy one, get one free on our most popular...